hmm. if you go into it yeah i've had a nightmare in in a cloud once like <laughs> seriously <laughs> and like literally <laughs> yep how's it going <laughs> After yes. a week, how was your week? What it was like? Week was good. Guided some aspiring pilots about the process. That's nice. Awesome. Yes, and anything interesting you got? Yes, I was speaking to this aspiring pilot yesterday. Uh huh. He wants to become a pilot. Uh huh. He has the finances. He's medically fit. Uh huh. That's great. Yes. That's so good. what's stopping him is his parents. So they are scared of traveling by air. and oh. they think that it's a risky job to be in so i have to convince them that it's not risky and he can become a pilot well it's it can be risky if if uh, during the flight training uh, the student is too adventurous <laughs> yes i mean if if someone <laughs> has a macho attitude then right. definitely it's risky but right. if you follow what is taught to you it's never risky yeah yeah i mean if if someone tries to take the cessna beyond its limitations and yes, tries yes. to do a, a loop and then somersault and and stuff into it <laughs> yes yes i mean you cannot uh, take a cessna above 129 that is vne right right so if if you are doing an emergency descent yeah. you cannot exceed that speed yeah absolutely if you do exceed then the wing may fall off the propeller may fall yeah. off anything anything can happen, can happen. Mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. the the prop can can over speed and and stuff anything yes. could could go correct wrong. correct right. correct yeah The Cessna doesn't have a gearbox. It's directly connected to direct drive. Yeah, yeah direct mm-hmm. drive. Yeah. How was your week? My week? Yes, I flew a lot in this uh-huh. week. Uh-huh. Yeah. And last episode we were talking about the thermals, and right. now we will be talking about thunderstorms, which <laughs> I experienced in this week. <laughs> right. Yes, it is. Um, I mean, it has started to Mumbai, develop. Mumbai doesn't doesn't have uh, thunderstorms yet. Mumbai doesn't have because by the time the monsoon reaches uh, Mumbai, it is approximately in first week of June. Right. Whereas, uh, because of the inland area, and this is not monsoon season which has started in South India, but it is pre-monsoon. Correct. So inland area gets heated up really fast, and right. because of the high temperature, if there is even a bit of moisture. then it leads to thunderstorm yeah and uh, yes these inland areas like nagpur hyderabad the bangalore for that matter these are quite susceptible to uh, you know stormy activity in pre monsoon season so yes i had some experience of flying into that and uh, landing into heavy rain Try. and uh, yes of course so uh, you know it was rain and in the rain uh, you can definitely attempt an approach in life absolutely but, yeah. i mean we used to not go if uh, there is a rain right yes definitely like if we see any precipitation on the radar if we see cb clouds on the radar we have no option but to cancel if we are right. solo right yes. right right if we are with instructor then we decide mutually and see if we can fly or no yes yes right but my instructor used to always tell me like treat weather as god Okay, you correct. cannot beat weather. You can never beat weather. Correct, yeah, correct. if you take any chance, weather will always win. Correct. Yeah, how much ever good of a pilot a yes. person is, if uh, he or she is stuck in bad weather, it's it's done. Especially in aircraft like Cessnas and and yes. stuff, right? Yes, you cannot go into a thunderstorm with a Cessna, right? Yes, of course. Even uh, we don't go into thunderstorm. We do right. avoid thunderstorm. Right. and uh, but even if you are close to it then also it gets very bumpy like uh, the other day when i was flying and uh, i was maintaining one uh, flight level 150 mm-hmm. just going in for landing into hyderabad what's and flight level 150 if someone doesn't know yeah flight level 150 is 15000 feet above mean sea level considering the standard pressure setting right yeah But we haven't ever flown in flight levels yes. we have always flown in feet until now but we will yeah. be flying in flight yeah levels. because in us a uh, flight level 180 and yeah. below is altitude right yeah. and yeah. above yeah. that is flight level yeah. that is the transition level is fixed uh, yeah 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 whereas in india that is not the case above right. uh, transition altitude correct you would name it as a uh, flight level yeah so your 
the minimum of flight level is flight level 50 of Correct. course it depends on uh, transition altitude it varies from place to place Correct. but yeah so uh, when i was there and because of sudden jerk due to the gusty weather and because of the you know uh, turbulence due to the clouds around the autopilot tripped and we went up by about 300 feet and 300 feet it just went right. up it was autopilot was not able to take it right we controlled it and made sure that it again got back to that 15000 feet right and um, yes uh, it was kind of a scary moment for others and for the passengers at times but uh, we are supposed to handle that aircraft in such situations right uh, if autopilot is not doing the job or if the automation fails or if there is any a uh, command needs to be given to right. the autopilot and the of uh, you know fmgs then we are the ones as pilots who do that correct right so his parents okay. the the parents okay. that he mentioned hmm. okay hmm. should they be scared or they should not be oh <laughs> so <laughs> The aircrafts uh, are pretty safe and uh, back in time okay. when the aviation started that was the time when it was not very safe because everything was new yeah, to back mankind. In time. Yeah, right? back in time. Yeah. So when the aviation started that was the time that's when Wright Brothers flew the plane right. in 1903. That's the time when uh, it was in a very primitive stage. Correct. So that time yes it was not the most safest means to transport but over time as because of the past accidents when the aviation learned from those Correct. mistakes and made sure that these mistakes don't happen again the procedures are let down Correct. and they are called as sops which are standard operating procedures and these sops are written in mm. blood because it has been let down there because of its past mistakes and someone has lost the life and hence those procedures are let down and hence yeah. it has to be you know followed meticulously and yeah because of that those procedures it makes the flying yeah. more safer profession correct and don't consider that it legit really is written in blood no okay uh, it's it's an analogy basically someone lost life for that procedure to be there so mm. that's the significance and importance of it that's that's why yes. it's it's not like an angry girlfriend's uh, love letter with blood no <laughs> no nothing nothing like that <laughs> <laughs> yes. no 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 jokes around blood guys yeah but it easy. that's how that's what is hmm. said uh, yeah no so that is that is serious that is serious yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what are the mitigating actions that you think of when you plan your route as a single engine airplane pilot? So so that in case of any kind of a engine malfunction, yeah, you would have a mitigating. Would preferably think? remain within uh, the gliding distance, plan uh, altitudes accordingly, right? Correct. Apart from that, engine failure, right? Got what it. kind of mitigation, basically? Like, uh, if there is a bad weather, we used to not go because that was the SOP of the flight school, okay? So, because it's a training flight. It's Got not it. a compulsive Got flight, it. right? It's a training flight. You can do it tomorrow, Got right? It. It. In airlines, you cannot do that. Like, passengers have booked a ticket for Got this it. flight. It. it has to go whether mm. it has to take a diversion whatever uh, uh, not diversion deviation mm -hmm. but you have to go to the destination in training flights if the weather is bad yeah you probably not go correct right and in case of engine failure what you would do is basically remain within the glide distance and and everything what else we used to do yeah just follow the emergency uh, checklist yeah. like you have to be at uh, glide speed and then you search a field to land or the nearest airport to land and then you just follow the emergency procedures. Correct. We are given mock engine failures when, when we are training. So it's kind of easy for us. Like we, we won't be shocked. Oh, engine has failed. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we would perform the emergency checklist as soon as we know that the engine has failed. And there are certain parameters to look out mm -hmm. in the like the cockpit. Like if the engine has failed or engine Got is it. not delivering Got it. Got that it. much Got power. It. Right. Got it. 
basically before going for a flight it's it's all in the head that you Correct. have to do the whole pre flight action okay starting from checking the weather Correct. and Correct. then Correct. the aircraft and which aircraft and the 100 hour maintenance the annual maintenance and everything about the pre flight action and then looking at yourself whether am i okay to fly like um, free of sickness or no alcohol no nothing all Correct. good mentally uh, straight up Correct. and everything i am safe for safe check yes. checklist yeah. there's also yeah. a maintenance scan which we check so that maintenance scan has a maintenance history of the aircrafts so if some part or something has failed in the past then we would know about that plane yeah, that so tech log tech yes log. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah correct yes. correct so we would know if any emergency is there what can we expect correct 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 so what is i am safe checklist in india we didn't used to have any thing like that i think it is more correct. of a fa no, thing it's, 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 just hmm. yeah, it's just correct, for reference it's not a checklist it's just for reference that correct. you yes. can check mark yes assessment like whether you are good yeah. to fly or no so correct. i is for illness like you don't have any illness so if you have like sinus or if you have uh, yeah. like sore throat correct, or something correct. if you fly to a high altitude it could cause like disturbances in your like vestibular hmm. system right. right yeah yeah because uh, in the us the uh, ga general aviation is back right so people after 3 4 months just take their own aircraft and and go out and fly right correct uh, well i mean it's not advisable okay but yeah their current Uh, so they they'll go mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so acronyms like these actually help you move forward that's correct, that's correct, pretty correct. much it uh, i mean some might make sense some might not but the acronyms that are given by fa those those really are good okay mm-hmm. like people make up acronyms i don't know how good it is that but mm-hmm. yeah uh, the ones that are given by fa really are good Uh, yeah, so I for what illness, illness and then MS for medication. So medication. if you are on medication, right. that should not affect the safety of the flight, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So and then S is for sleep. You need to have at least yeah. seven to eight hours of sleep so Correct. that you can function Enough. well during the Correct. flight. Yeah. Mm. Alcohol. Then A is alcohol, right? Yes. Like not that either. doesn't. Don't drink alcohol. Do not drink alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> All right, safe. All right, let's drink alcohol. <laughs> no, this is not alcohol. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 So alcohol, and then uh, F is fatigue. Okay. So, so what's the difference between fatigue and and sleep? Fatigue you, is a chronic. uh you know Try. fatigue for lower period of time if in case there is a sleep deprivation or if in case you are extremely exhausted prolonged. the prolonged sleep deprivation and exhaustion can lead to fatigue all right so right. sleep and fatigue are these two different terminologies yeah yeah and then e is emotions emotional stability right yes yes so you can't really fight with your wife and and go for a flight that's not recommended <laughs> <laughs> or girlfriend for that matter don't do it no <laughs> be yeah. completely calm and collected and and yeah in a focused mindset when yes. when going for a flight yes yeah so uh, the way you have one engine there is no other backup in case if the engine fails so we have two engines you know in commercial planes mainly <laughs> yeah we have two engines or more engines so in that case we consider with one engine failure what is our plan of action that mm-hmm. should always be ready so like when we uh, consider any route then that route should be such that the uh, at any point of time the aircraft is within 60 minutes with one engine in operative cruise speed so if in case that is considered then you would be able to execute that flight otherwise the rest of the things are in cnt double a which yeah. is edto and all that is not right. we are not discussing that standard now standard diversion so, time operation right. yes that is for the flying over sea or where they are flying over forest areas polar areas where there is no alternate close absolutely by. okay yeah. so that is uh, the mitigating action that we mm-hmm. consider in case of an engine failure 
and uh, when we talk about yeah we hmm. we have one thing if the prop stops land in the crops okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> not really but <laughs> yes yes that's true i mean if if it's a plain land then it's safe hey this is this is not any flying advice okay i'm not not an instructor okay this is joke okay <laughs> 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 so uh, i know the most common Lee asked question by passengers or if any yeah. any pilot when they are flying as a passenger then uh, one thing that they are scared the most is turbulence yeah so turbulence is not something that is going to break the airplane into pieces right so aircraft is designed first of all to take that much turbulence right. and on the top of it turbulence can be of uh, various types like we will just consider the main categories of mm-hmm. turbulence which are experienced very commonly mm-hmm. one is uh, when you are coming in for landing in thermals uh, when we are yes, what yes. we discussed you know so because of that gust there could be turbulence the other thing is there could be turbulence because of the clouds you know if you fly through clouds then there is turbulence right then um, if you are flying at a higher altitudes and when you are in the jet streams mm-hmm. you know then if there is a change in the wind direction there is turbulence so right. jet streams are the one which are quite associated with the uh, turbulence yeah. since it is not because of clouds it is yeah. called as clear air turbulence right right and there could it is not be in clouds it is just yeah, yeah you can't see it you can't see you it can't on see. weather radar you can't yeah. see it anywhere yeah. and uh, still correct, there correct. is a turbulence right so yeah but there is one way to get injured uh, during turbulence uh, you can guess that is <laughs> you can you guess what it is for passengers in the way to get injured yeah during tur- turbulence this is not listening to the captain and not wearing the seat belt <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah if someone does that sure yes. sure there can be an injury during yes. turbulence but as long as seat belts are there there is nothing to be scared of yes yeah like no, has there been any instance of passengers complaining because of turbulence because when i was not in the aviation field and whenever i used to travel by air I whenever there is turbulence I used to think the pilot doesn't know how to fly he might be learning or something mm. like that and I I regret it like I don't I didn't know about turbulence back then but now when I know about it I think like it's completely natural like it's right. due to the weather right, right. 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 so do you have passengers like that who complain because of turbulence sometimes the passengers are curious to know like why is this aircraft uh, flying through the turbulence so as a pilot mostly we know majority of the times we know that when the turbulence will be expected that's the time we ensure that we keep the seat belt on in those areas where yeah. we anticipate turbulence even we inform the cabin crew that yes there are times when you might experience turbulence right. so be careful because they are serving passengers in the hmm. cabin so because otherwise they are standing they are not sitting when the seat belt sign is on unless if pilot thinks it is really bad that cabin crew should not be standing in right. the cabin then only we make an announcement yeah, that the cabin crew yeah, should yeah. be returning to their seats okay yeah. so uh, when uh, this turbulence is uh, anticipated we do make an announcement appropriate right. uh, at appropriate times and uh, there could be turbulence because if in case you're flying uh, Airbus 320 you have Airbus 380 ahead of you on above right above yeah. you will get the wake of that aircraft and yes definitely <coughs> there will be turbulence so no, i in, won't get it i'm a good pilot yes <laughs> in that case <laughs> there are certain procedures like uh, you know slop strategic lateral offset procedure so to avoid yourself from getting into yeah. the preceding aircraft yeah, you, wake you, because that aircraft is has a lot of wake yeah, what it is 5 uh, mile offset right uh, no it is uh, either 0.5 miles or 1 mile okay. or 2 mile depending to the right of your track right depending on how much is the distance between your airway and the other airway right if right. in case the two airways are very close okay so slop is not 
just one particular offset it no, is it could, yeah, be, it could be now okay. recently it has changed from uh, you know one or two miles to it could be between either 0.5 mile or 1 mile or 2 mile depending right. on distance between two yeah. airways adjacent to you yeah. so that is always this is airline point. specific flying okay we haven't flown uh, these things okay well, our way of um, uh, avoiding turbulence would be land ahead of the touchdown point yes. of the heavier aircraft and, and uh, maintain before. above the glide slope of them because the turbulence weak turbulence drops in in altitude like height and um, if you maintain mm -hmm. above it like that way i've landed uh behind a 787 oh like i could see a 787 okay. is landing and, and okay. i landed right ahead. behind mm -hmm. it okay mm -hmm. I mean, ahead of it ahead of it i was I mean, behind him no you I mean, landed the ahead, touchdown of the touchdown. Yeah, the, ahead of the touchdown point was ahead of it yeah That's absolutely <laughs> but on the approach i was mm. behind the 787 yes, yes, right sorry. heavy <laughs> Yes, heavy. Yeah. yeah, seven eight seven is heavy. Yeah, so so you yeah. get it like caution, wake wake turbulence. Now be prepared to go around or or whatever, but yes. but do not get into that correct, seven eight correct. seven wake, right? Correct. Just maintain above and follow. Yeah, there is nothing much that is felt except for the part after touchdown. After touchdown, yeah, you do feel a bit. Yeah. 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 So, if in case you are flying commercially, then the ATC do maintain the separation right. distance-wise yeah, from the even in our case, aircraft, they used to, yeah. I believe. Yes, they yes, they, yes. they would, but there won't be like because it's a smaller. It, it was a busy airport, airport right? Yeah. And there are many training flights. So, as long as we would maintain above the glide slope, have you landed b behind uh, a heavy? No, not. Not yet. But we used to all the time land behind A320s, right? And A320 for a Cessna is heavy already. Yes, yes. It's <laughs> like, heavy. Yeah, it's, it's like a lot. I have took off after the Airbus have took right. off. But right. I have never landed behind an Airbus. Okay. So, uh, in US, I've seen the separation is uh, yeah, very, yes. very less. Yeah. Like it is, I myself, when I was flying as a passenger, when I came to meet you right. in that uh, flight, American Airlines. Taxi speed is faster. They they fast. It's, it's they taxi crazy. Really the separation fast. is yeah. way yeah. that aircraft went airborne and we were right. we started yes, our takeoff it's, roles. It's like that for us every day. Yeah. Like we we could see like three yeah. four aircrafts yeah. ahead of us landing. If yes. one of them delays on the runway, yeah. the next go one around. has to go. Yeah. Around. Yeah. Uh -huh. no, I mean, yeah, not <laughs> neither of us has uh, had any A three twenty. Basically, we never made any A three twenty go around, <laughs> but. We have seen people doing <laughs> that. <laughs> right. So I was on the the whole shot, okay. Mm. Uh, for runway two seven, and uh, there was a Cirrus, okay. Now Cirrus had some problem, okay. Cirrus is an aircraft. Cirrus oh, is an yes. aircraft. It's a small single mm -hmm. engine mm -hmm. aircraft, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> this this guy conks on the runway okay <laughs> <laughs> like legit i could see the engine is stopped on oh the runway God, okay okay and there is an a320 that we could see as <laughs> approaching <laughs> <laughs> well that has to go, go around, around yeah right yeah so so that Ceres was just standing <laughs> on the runway and uh yeah basically the airbus a320 had to go around and oh, then no. the runway was closed for 10-15 minutes so all other A320s had to go around oh my god <laughs> so yeah yeah. burning that's 500 kilos of fuel yeah a lot a lot of fuel my god each go around it's okay <laughs> alright because <laughs> he couldn't do anything mm -hmm. that there is something happened luckily yeah, it yeah. happened before mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. right anyway so have you have you had anything? Have you flown a Ceres ever? No, but I have once backseated a flight in right. Ceres. Yeah, even even I used to backseat. I haven't flown, but I've, I've I was sitting in the the uh, on the right seat on on a Ceres once. <laughs> when <laughs> you were yeah yeah when yes. there was, uh, but no, I didn't touch controls. So no, I haven't flown a Ceres. So they they say that uh, it gets heated during summers on climb mm -hmm. yeah they have that parachute thing also if 
Yeah, caps. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah. So when I was when I backseated Cirrus, it was early in the morning. So it was a smooth ride. It was right. an instrument flight when I was right. learning. Yeah. Le- when I was learning like instrument right, flight. Right. 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 Yeah. So were you ever like uh, scared of any weather while while flying or something like something that you felt holy? I mean, there's nothing like scaring. Like, if you are scared, you cannot make decisions, right? right? You are not in your frame of right. mind, okay? Right. So, before the flight, you will have to check the weather. Mm-hmm. Like, so there are three things which I used to check as mm-hmm. the winds. Mm-hmm. Because when you are solo, you need to right. be within your crosswind limit. Yeah. Second thing is you see your en route weather. How is it? Like, right. is there any precipitation, thunderstorms, or any activity building up? And third thing is you... Check the forecast, like how it's going to be when you reach the destination and when you will be coming back to your school, right? Right. So if anything in these three steps uh-huh. is is not good or right. you're not comfortable right. with, I would cancel my flight. Right. Okay. Or shift my flight to the next day or right. something like that. Right. But if I'm if I know that the weather conditions are not suitable for yeah. me, if I know that crosswind is out of my limit right. i wouldn't go for that flight correct 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 yeah yeah i mean not going is is one thing for yes, sure yes. <laughs> <laughs> in in training that is but in yes. uh, airlines so the okay, one so thing we learn during yeah. our solo training is never take chances against weather yeah right yeah yes. so be scared of the weather yeah sure yes be scared of weather like divert the right. flight reroute your flight right. cancel the flight but right. don't take any chances against right. the weather right yeah aviation is about mitigating risks yes, right yes, i mean yes. uh Correct. the best uh not the best but um the simplest way to mitigate risk is not do anything right just just sit <laughs> and, right. and right. like right. everything involves certain Correct. risk Correct. but aviation is about managing it Correct. like when you go in precipitation right the crew is trained to go into it the yes. aircraft is able to go into Correct. it the aircraft has instruments that can go into it and Correct. that's when you make a decision to go despite of the precipitation correct, correct, in correct. our case yes. right yes. we were not experienced to go into precipitation the aircraft was a tiny cessna though it was equipped it could go th- into a precipitation if it is ifr certified and everything but yeah we were what 100 hours or something yes. yeah you were like during something. solo we were not allowed yeah. to go into precipitation With but uh, have you been into precipitation with an instructor yeah yeah. yes how, how was it so uh precipitation i feel is not every time gusty i've had the smoothest and the most pleasant flying experience while i was in uh precipitation okay like it was not heavy precipitation it was just uh, yeah m- even not light Drizzle precipitation log. okay <laughs> yeah light precipitation but it's like everywhere there are clouds okay yes. and and it's it's sunset time evening time everything yeah. is weather is so calm and then the breeze is so cool and and <laughs> it's so soothing like i can yeah. still right. remember right. each part of it right so it's not always bad but the the point is the visibility right the right. visibility is sometimes it is there sometimes it is not as you get into the cloud there is no visibility as you get out of it there is visibility so yeah it's as long as your ifr it's it's okay it's, it's not a problem i feel but then there is a precipitation such as but say vertical development hmm, of clouds hmm, okay hmm, hmm. if you go into it yeah i've had a nightmare in in a cloud once like <laughs> seriously and like literally it could mm, i mean knock my teeth out <laughs> seriously <laughs> i think it was a cv cloud <laughs> i guess not i don't, I don't know cumulus, what it was any cumulus yeah, cloud yeah. could be could give you that joke yeah okay. the the vertical develop- developing vertically yeah, developing yeah. cumulus cloud can give you that joke again if you consider the ifr rated then also there is a limit up to which yeah, you can absolutely. go to that visibility yeah. and then go and land yeah. like cat 1 landing yeah. category 1 yeah. ils yeah. which you can yeah. do up to about 550 meters right. so you know rvr so what happens is uh, whenever 
you are in the rain precipitation mm. is basically you are referring to rain or right. result right yes. so in that case there are two factors which could be affected one is visibility as you mentioned the other one is it could be windy also yeah. so the times you need to be more careful is when there is a wind strong wind especially Correct. if there is a cross wind that's the time when the handling is a challenge and yes that has to be uh, you know pilots are trained for that and pilots should be able to handle that of course uh, you know it gets uh, challenging with the cross wind and then you Correct. are crabbing and then coming in for land yeah. so recently when i did a landing and um, it was about quartering cross Correct. 25 knots and uh, it was raining heavily mm-hmm. and when you land that plane right yeah. on the center line at the aiming point marker and that nice yeah, land, that is you know, landing that is a great feeling you yeah, feel that yes you yeah, have feeling. really yeah. done a job and this is what you are paid for when right. there was you know not on the runway but around there was lightning happening and then there was you know this wind was there but visibility was good enough about 2000 meters which Correct. was good for executing that approach so after landing when we vacated parked the plane then passengers were uh, thanking us for getting the safe landing into hyderabad and uh, getting them safe back home That's so nice. yeah they were uh, really really happy and yeah. uh, for that particular ride so yes so uh, this this is I very mean, amazing there's a thing with pilot and landing so right. if you land a plane well like yeah. on the center line a smooth touchdown yeah. on the like aiming point you get a good sleep on that particular night like you are very satisfied yeah, with you are really right? satisfied yes. right there is a yes. different joy involved yes. into yes. it yes coming back to the point that have you have you experienced like uh, a yes i have experienced being in precipitation and uh, being in cloud as well uh-huh. so there was this 5 uh, hour like cross country we do like 300 nautical mile mm-hmm. right so i went to uh, savana charleston back to sanford right so it was a long flight and we were on IF- ifr flight plan mm-hmm. so on the way it was clear the sky was clear everything was good so we completed one leg uh to savana and then charleston and on the way back clouds started building up and uh, on the way i was you were ifr right yes i was yeah, ifr yeah. so on the way i was around 10 to 15 minutes inside the clouds okay oh that's, yes. that's a long time to be time. Yeah, yeah. because it's in cessna time. you cannot actually once you enter a cloud you see like the aircraft that you fly has weather radars mm-hmm. our yeah. aircraft Correct. used to not have weather Correct. radars Correct. Yes, Correct. right yes right, right. yeah so you were saying so w- once you are inside the cloud okay it's you and the instruments yeah. if you look out you tend to get disoriented yeah. Yeah. so it's always trust the instruments and fly accordingly right. Correct. okay and you have to maintain the flight level and stuff because it's tend to get turbulent inside right. the cloud and right. once i was out of the clouds then i could see few clouds below my aircraft and the precipitation was going on right. so i was flying like a bird above the cloud mm-hmm. exp- uh, like right. escaping the precipitation right. Right? right right it was fun like i still remember the exact pictures of that particular flight because it's so much joy to fly such yeah, adventurous absolutely. flights correct, yeah correct correct absolutely so when you have weather radars then you can at least navigate yourself at night time or around weather Yeah and, and you know how long is the yes. precipitation for you know how correct. bad is the precipitation correct, correct, right correct. or how bad is the yes. weather in a uh, non weather radar situation you do not have that kind of information yeah, at all Yeah that's correct that's right? correct and if you enter a cloud with a non weather radar um, aircraft which is legal okay you can enter mm-hmm. a cloud mm-hmm. if you are mm-hmm. ifr use your best pilot's judgment okay you don't know when the cloud is going to end and Correct. you don't know when uh, which direction would be the fastest way to get out of that right. weather Correct. and when you are in the cloud which is vertically developing and developed mm-hmm. there's like 100 200 feet on a cessna is going up and down yeah, every yeah, moment yeah, yeah, okay yeah. it's like the <laughs> yes. the digital <laughs> instruments are like flicking <laughs> like this and <laughs> you are 
लाइक इट इज अ स्ट्रगल टू कीप द एयरक्राफ्ट अप राइट बिकॉज ऑन द से लेफ्ट विंग देर इज Uh, an up thrust and on the right wing there is a down the aircraft could topple any yeah, moment yes, right yes, anything can go wrong when i mean once it just needs to happen once right. and after that the yeah. pilot won't ever get <laughs> into a cloud <laughs> seriously yeah, yeah so yeah. i mean at least for mm-hmm. assessment mm-hmm. i mean whenever you are flying ifr or right. whenever anyone is flying ifr right. you see the cloud in yeah. front of us so yeah. if you see that you can always yeah, like ask for 10 nautical miles deviation yeah. deviation, yeah. Yeah. deviation. Yeah. Correct, yeah. correct why the deviation true but if it is not approved then yeah you don't have a choice don't have a choice but ultimately if you think that it is affecting the safety just Indicate. do whatever you want to mm-hmm. do mm-hmm. get out of it mm-hmm. and then then yeah see correct. here's the thing if you are alive you can handle everything right correct True. <laughs> this is this is for training flights, okay? Yeah. This is not for uh, the commercial, commercial airline flying. This is for the training flight. Smaller the aircraft, more affected it is by weather, right? Correct, um, correct. Yeah. Even uh, we are affected because of the wind shear, and yes, we do have the wind shear alert systems in our aircrafts. So any time if uh, we have an alert, yes, we do not. First of all, if we are taking off, we about take off. if we are on the approach to land we go around right. so that is the way we ensure that we are not into the wind shear and let the aircraft uh, go wherever it is we use full thrust so that you know we have the right. maximum energy in the aircraft to get out of it yeah so yeah that is uh, something but for the smaller airplanes uh, yes that alert is not there so you have to use your judgment if there is any bad weather which is associated with wind shear then you do not oh uh, you know depart right of course yeah but we used to use that adsb weather right yes. like that was a replacement for uh, okay. the weather radar okay, okay it would be delayed by 2 minutes okay? okay okay but also there is assistance from oh, the atc mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. atc mm-hmm. would themselves voluntarily tell you because they know the type of aircraft correct, right correct, correct. they know that the aircraft the aircraft cannot handle this weather okay correct. so there 10 15 miles before itself there would be like 30 miles deviation or a uh, fly heading they'll vector around it correct but if they are w- busy they won't right correct correct and and yeah i yeah anyway You had I an won't experience. incriminate myself by <laughs> saying anything that I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you had an experience of uh, you know ATC telling you regarding the wind shear, right? Yes, when yes, yes. So it was uh, during summer when the temperatures goes up, and right. uh, I was on my final to land, right? Right. So suddenly the aircraft. went 200 feet below and then suddenly below yes okay <laughs> okay and then suddenly it rose up 200 feet okay okay so i was just below the 100 feet of the altitude which i was actually holding try it right so i don't know if it was a wind shear or it was a gust but that was if it was a gust it was a real strong gust <laughs> yeah, yes yeah. i mean in summer like due to the heating of the But ground do you like sink because of a gust yeah there is a possibility because close to the surface aha uh-huh. there are up currents and because of some obstructions around there could be the air could have the eddies the okay, up okay. and down eddies okay oh. so that is the reason why you can have this kind of a experience but uh, it's not always that it goes up it could sink down also Try because it. of those uh, you know it is an up Try and down currents due Try to the friction layer that we call it as so uh, there is something called as a friction layer which mm-hmm. is up to about 2 to 3000 feet uh-huh. in this friction layer apart from the thermal currents which are updrafts due to the obstructions around like trees or buildings uh-huh. when this up current hits then it changes into down currents as well correct you know so there is not only the updrafts uh-huh. there could be downdrafts as well which is associated with the gusty right. weather condition so my wind shear is sudden change in the wind speed and wind direction you know that right. that happens really fast and that is the reason at that that happens even vertically uh-huh. and horizontally so right. that is the time which is very uh, 
you know critical and uh, we are of course not supposed to get into it if we get into it we need to take the immediate action to get out of it Correct. that's the reason why we have a memory item okay for uh, wind shear if there right, is right. wind shear which is to use the maximum thrust that aircraft has which is toga thrust mm -hmm. so with by using that you use the maximum energy and give it the maximum energy to the aircraft and get out of it so if you are taking off then you abort take off in case of wind shear and if you are on approach to land then you use the maximum thrust that the aircraft has which is toga thrust and get out of it you don't continue your approach to land okay right. so that's very critical scenario that's the reason why we have a memory item for this what is toga thrust toga take off go around thrust okay, okay that's I mean, what you, is uh, the incidents related to weather that has happened in the past so i think aviation have learned from it and yeah, i think absolutely. now it's pretty safe to travel via air yes that is the <laughs> safest mode of transport yes, yes. one of the safest modes one of, of the safest modes of transport for sure so uh, coming back to the point uh, the students yes. uh, parents ideally should not be uh, scared about it see that that is the thing about technology okay the technology people who do not adapt to it are scared of it right it's understandable and um, imagine how much of a trust that you have in the crew how much of a trust that you have in an aircraft to put your body inside it okay <laughs> and let it fly 38000 feet above the ground right yes so yes. it's it's a lot of trust i mean when when i did skydiving okay that's that was the moment uh, i realized it how much of a trust i do have in this parachute <laughs> like <laughs> seriously <laughs> like i'm i'm betting my life for it okay but yes absolutely aviation has learned as you mentioned aviation has learned from the mistakes of the past okay back in time say 1930s 50s yeah maybe it wasn't that safe but Correct. at this point it surely is like it is one of the safest and most effective way yes. of traveling yes. right yes yes and yes. due to automation the industry is improving day by day and uh, as we know like if we want to check the weather we have various tools right now right like if we can see each and everything we can see forecast for the next 24 hours right absolutely we can see everything on our fingertip absolutely so that's that's yes. the level we have reached yeah in yes. aviation yes. speaking of which this this used to be our weather radar yes okay this is this is, this is okay. what it is okay so this is basically adsb weather okay 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 so this has a receiver and the satellites okay. yeah give it the signal that that was the weather and it shows shows the the uh, weather on the, on the ipad app. yeah yeah, yeah on oh, the ipad okay. yeah i see yeah Great. it does Awesome. I'll, I'll show you someday. I don't know if ADSB weather coverage is there in India or not. I don't think it is. So it is there on the flight radar twenty four, which is an app, and on that app you track. That app is used to track the aircraft. So right? if flight uh, radar has the feature of um, this, what say the weather? Yes, it has. Then you then can see even weather. then it should have. It yeah, should have yeah. that feature. So. Yeah, <laughs> like that is that was our replacement for uh, okay, okay, I weather see. radar. Mm -hmm. It's it's delayed by two minutes, but yeah, that's yeah, the delay. That's, but that's okay. It's okay. So, uh, risks are there in every even for the flying. There is it comes with certain amount of risk, but we need to know how to mitigate it. Hmm. Hmm. So, you cannot have no risk at all. You are stepping out of home. there will be yes. certain risk unless yeah. you are sitting at if you are sitting at any place if the ceiling fan falls yeah or the piano like in tom and jerry yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if that happens there is a risk unless you take and you mitigate that risk and you know what has to be done in that case you're good all right so you're good yes 
I don't know if everybody could connect with Tom and Jerry. Like, we are millennials. Gen Z might not even know no, what, is uh, what is Tom and Jerry. I mean, yeah, Tom is a cat, and Jerry is a mouse, and uh, yeah, it's it's <laughs> a, a mischievous carton between both of those. I would any day side Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, Jerry. Jerry was used to harass Tom, like matter <laughs> of the fact. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anything can happen to you at yeah. any moment, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. Piano could totally <laughs> fall on <laughs> someone's head. <laughs> there's, there's no guarantee what's gonna happen in the next yeah, second sure. or the next y- minute. Yeah, right? sure. Correct. Absolutely. We we True. assume and um, we sometimes take it for granted that that this Correct. is safe this is not everything has Correct. certain risks and while driving has risks and while traveling uh, anything Correct. has risks and right more. like imagine we are living on 54th floor right now mm. <laughs> 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 that's a risk within itself <laughs> yes. right? feel the wind load no, mm. I cannot, but uh, I mean, I haven't felt actually the, I guess it's because of the kind of structure. This is the, uh, this has a core and uh, okay. three sides to the building. Yeah. So th- I guess the wind deflection because of it is uh, lesser because I do not feel moving or I do not. Do you, do you feel like moving or being there are gaps in between mm-hmm. two for guess. the wind to for pass the I guess. Mm-hmm. do you feel it <laughs> no. <laughs> not right now mm. let's see in monsoon if you can feel some yeah monsoon. I mean for sure there are clouds right yeah. it's, it's amazing <laughs> yes yeah absolutely so speaking uh, of which clouds turbulence can oh it boy. can it break the wings of the aircraft no aircraft is pretty much designed to take any load which it would experience and the maximum load that aircraft is designed to take is rather 50 percent more than the maximum loads that there are experienced ever to any aircraft right so factor of safety right yes yes that's the safety I, I, margin i have seen in this airbus documentary so they have like demonstrated their wings so they have like the wings were straight and then they have stretched it to a degree like 60 degree up try try the wings were yeah. intact and they were testing the loads on that so i was try. seeing like it's way flexible than what we think it's, yeah. it's not like a straight. stiff yes yeah. mm-hmm. it's yeah. not mm-hmm. stiff yeah. it's mm-hmm. very flexible mm-hmm. yeah because if we see the load diagram okay like um we are civil engineers right we would think in the load diagram yeah no, so this is the coming. fuselage while in flight these wings are carrying the load of the um, fuselage, fuselage right but while on ground the fuselage, fuselage is, carrying. is carrying the load of the wings because there's fuel in it right yeah so Okay. While okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I know you are good at it but <laughs> 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 yes <laughs> So while in flight, the wings are the one which will take the lift, as yeah. you said. Yeah. So That's the upward each force. wing yeah. will take 50% of the lift. Correct. Okay. So this as is upward force. Hmm. And now there is a downward force of weight over here yeah. acting from the CG. Yeah, so there is a so, shear right here. So there is a lot of stress which yeah. will be exerted yeah. over here. Yeah. But when wings are designed to take that. Correct. like. Upward from here and downward from here. Correct. That's correct. why there is something yes. called as MZFW, maximum zero yeah, fuel weight. Yeah, that reduces yeah. that uh, shear, right? Because so because there is a downward force acting on the way. So, maximum zero fuel weight is something which is maximum weight without any fuel in it. Okay. Right, right. So, if you add fuel, that will overcome yeah, yeah, this yeah, upward yeah, force. Reduce so, the shear at the yeah. wing root. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, that's why weight of the aircraft without any fuel in it should not exceed maximum zero fuel okay. weight. Absolutely. That's the Here's the thing. thing. They can join CNTA when, when they want to <laughs> really give DGC exams, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, talking about the, uh, let's say there is, a, you know, bad weather. It is uh, raining or the visibility is poor. We always have something called as alternate or a 
backup plan. So, in aviation, we do have backup plan to mitigate the, you know, risk, right? If in case we cannot make it to land there, if there are many aircrafts waiting for the right. weather to improve, we cannot make it if it is bad where the aircrafts are getting wind shear warnings or if there is a poor visibility. Then we wait for the weather improvement. But before we know that, yes, you know, there is, you can't keep on waiting for hours together. Correct. We have a limited resource of a fuel, right? Correct. So when you come to the point where there is something called as minimum diversion fuel or MDF, uh -huh. before you hit that fuel, you need to make a decision whether you could go in for landing at that airport if the weather is okay or to divert. Yeah, you that can't, is a decision. Yeah, you can't encroach into the yeah. fuel for yeah. your diversion. Yeah. That you would lead into correct. not reaching the alternate, alternate. or the destination. Correct, correct, correct. So, you need to make a decision before you reach the MDF, we call it as, which is minimum diversion fuel. Yeah. And then that minimum diversion fuel has the alternate fuel. That means from your destination to go to alternate and wait, the hold there for another 30 okay. minutes. So, Try. that is... You make a decision, you go there yeah. and then go and land. Because, yeah. so this is a mitigating action which you do in order to overcome the risk of landing Try. into Try. a bad weather. Try. Okay. So that's, uh, and if in case it is known that yes, destination already has really bad weather, then we plan two alternates. Correct. Because otherwise everyone will be diverting and yeah. that airport will yes. be saturated with so many aircrafts with, uh, you know, critical Correct. or marginal fuel with them. So, Correct. that is something yeah, so which is planned. So, yeah, that was about the alternate and yes. the backup in case the weather at destination or Say something's wrong with the runway, right? Something's yes. wrong with the runway, like something happens, okay? Correct. Like there is a bird strike during takeoff troll and, and the aircraft or the, the runway is uh, has some debris that, that uh, someone cannot land, right? Yeah, that can happen, absolutely. But as you mentioned, you there is a point when you've got to make the decision, Correct. right? Correct. So that brings us to uh, one point that Pilots are pretty decisive, right? Yes. Pretty, no, they are really decisive. They are knowledgeable about the subject matter. Okay, they are trained for the subject matter. They are skilled for the subject matter. But once the point comes, there is no back and forth about, about making correct, decisions, correct, correct. right? This is the line where you make a decision and then execute on it, right? Correct. So likewise, I would say, which is really a good character trait for humans, right? Now, many people are might be considering to become pilots, okay? Like, yeah, for sure, 12th is uh, the exams are over and many people might be considering, okay? So, in that case, I would say, I would recommend, okay, Whatever that decision they want to make, you want to make, whatever, if you are watching this, okay, if you are going back and forth, whether should I become a pilot or I should take something else, okay, if that is the place where you are at right now, okay, decide something, okay, I'm not saying that whether you should choose becoming a pilot or not become a pilot, okay, none of it, you want to become a pilot, decide on it and then start executing on it okay never look back okay if you are thinking that you want to become an engineer go for it start with it and then do not think that later i'll do pilot training or later i'll do this after three years i'll do this i'll after five years i'll don't don't do it okay focus on the career choice that you get okay Focus on it and perform best at it, okay? If you do that, you will succeed in that one vertical, okay? No career is bad. If you put in enough, you will surely succeed. That's, that's Okay? And same goes with pilot training, okay? Same goes with pilot career. Pilot career is a great career. She chose it. We chose it. We love it, okay? Not to tell you whether you should or should not become pilots, okay? But 
once you make a decision don't think about like all right should i do engineering or should i do pilot training or how be decisive move forward okay and then come at 100% to it that's my two cents yes definitely but in if someone is doing an engineering degree yeah. right yeah and if he or she doesn't feel like this is worth it and they are not enjoying it their time correct so that's the point they need to decide again whether they want to continue or no right yeah maybe yeah yeah i guess i mean because you cannot continue on a thing which you don't love right it, it you are wasting absolutely. like both like time and money absolutely right so yeah. you need to decide and you need to identify that situation if you're not enjoying it try you need to straight away decide what's the thing which interest yeah. me right yeah sure and then take decision accordingly and execute it so you cannot do this like very often like yeah you need to think before you take decision you need you don't have to take decision abruptly and then like next day you say oh no yeah the I informed become, decision yeah. right informed yeah. decision put a timeline to make a decision that this is when i'll be making this decision before that get all the information that you could and and decide on it and move forward yes definitely okay. and if you think like you want to become a pilot you can ask like me in a line ha anyone like we are happy to help you absolutely yes. and once you gather all the information once you analyze all the stuff that's the time you make a decision you cannot make decisions seeing someone's youtube video enjoying their life right Try. you cannot see like oh they are going to uh, various five star hotels enjoying their life Try. okay that is definitely a part of pilot life but that is amazing part of yes. pilot life but yes. there will come a point when th- it is not so fancy part of pilot training as well right yes. like there are difficult parts like uh, say imagine someone finished their cpl in 2020 Yeah, it's difficult, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. For us also, like we completed our CPL in uh, I think twenty twenty end or twenty twenty one. Yeah, right. 20. So due to COVID, like we are not able to give the Try. RTR exam, so Try. we yet to do our conversion process. Yeah. So everything will not go according to the plan. So if something goes wrong, you will have to like replan your things, and you you cannot control things which are out of your control, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah i mean the uh, my take about it is basically control the things that you can okay the things that are beyond your control okay uh, such as covid right it is beyond your control do everything that you can do despite of that situation and yeah that's that's about it okay <laughs> so make that decision be it engineering medical uh pilot training anything make that decision don't be confused okay and yes there are upsides to pilot training for sure but there are certain downsides also okay uh and pilots are basically paid for the skill okay the skill of pilotage or mm-hmm. flying yes. right yes when there is demand for the skill compensations are high right when the demand is low compensations are lower <laughs> yes <laughs> right yes. what right. what what do you think about it and, and yes definitely and uh, but com- despite of it pilots are really paid well i think because which profession actually gives salaries like these i mean so when you handle a situation like in a challenging conditions yeah. you handle the flight well okay, you want to deflect the topic all right <laughs> we yeah, understand well. <laughs> that's sorry, sorry. No, no, that's okay <laughs> <laughs> oh. i understand all right so yeah, those yeah. are the types you really feel that yes it yeah. is this salary yeah, so you just don't just sit on the auto- autopilot that's what you mean oh. <laughs> 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 no pilots do not just sit on the autopilot it's a huge responsibility that's what get they get compensated for okay and honestly every profession doctors do their, their job engineers do their job okay like doctors even pilots take care of lot many lives at once every day okay every day 180 passengers in one one aircraft four sectors like that 720 passengers in a day that's that's a huge number right Now in three twenty one, two hundred and thirty passengers right. per flight. Yeah, 
So in into like four, it's, it's a check, lot. Check, yeah. Check, check. Yes. Absolutely. Close to thousand yeah. passengers. Thousand a passengers. Day. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, pilots do move a lot many people around every day, right? Yes, like right. in a in a lifetime, they'd be moving uh, probably millions of people, right? Yes. Yes. We used to move ourselves. <laughs> 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 yes, that's that's two hundred hours of moving ourselves. Right. Mm. <laughs> I mean that that reminds me of a joke. So, yeah, a kid was asked that, "What do you want to do in life?" She goes like, "I want to help people," and then from her father and so further goes like you help yourself that'll be great <laughs> 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 so yeah we are i guess at that stage as we started with this the fear of flying okay as long as the medicals are good as long as you have planned financially to become a pilot okay as long as you have a hundred percent willingness to accept the goods and the bad parts of the uh, pilot career okay if that is all sorted okay and if you are committed that you want to become a pilot and you want to persist with that decision okay then sure move forward with pilot training okay one reason that should not be a reason to not become a pilot and that is being scared of flying <laughs> right yes. yes i mean people generally don't know what's going on in inside the plane how does the airline operate and stuff like we all discuss like if if you're flying to a destination you have alternate airports right then you carry uh, like fuel like there is diversion fuel there is emergency fuel there is holding fuel right, right. there is reserve fuel you have all the things calculated yeah, and everything, everything is, is, is perfectly in place. buttoned yes. up right yes. it's it's perfectly buttoned up and See, the highest level of risk in pilot career is during flight training, okay? Because the experience of the crew is lesser, the aircraft is smaller, okay? And you're learning. And you're learning, okay? But even then, there is not many fatal accidents, right? Yes, yes. The worst that could happen is an engine failure, okay? A Cessna can land on road also. <laughs> yes. Like seriously, it can. Even if, even if engine fails, we are trained to handle the engine failures, right? Yeah. So during training, you will learn all the emergency procedures. You will learn how to handle the plane in an emergency. And you will be trained it and you will be tested upon those uh, things. Got it. So there's nothing to worry. But you need to put in the effort. You need to learn it. Fear shouldn't be the reason because eventually as you fly and uh, do your Video. training, you will get used to uh, it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Yes. yes. So fear should not be the reason of not choosing a pilot career. Once you start your pilot training, you will get used to it and it will feel normal. Right. So... That's it. Yeah, subjected to uh, everything else, uh, like we mentioned, uh, is buttoned up and you're certain about becoming a pilot. And yeah, fear is not basically something that uh, pilots can work upon, I guess. This is not any psychological advice or anything. If someone has a real fear of heights, okay? Don't become a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if someone is diagnosed with a um, psychological condition of uh, having fear of heights, <laughs> right? Then Got no, it. don't don't become a pilot. Got but it. Yes. but aircraft overall is safe as long as uh, pilots make right decisions. And yeah, aviation is safe, pretty good. Fly, fly more. Watching. All right. Thank you for watching, uh, watching, viewing, subscribing, listening, anything. Okay. Thank you for joining this conversation. It was great having you. And uh, yeah, like, share, subscribe, <laughs> anything that you would like. Okay. And if you are an aspiring pilot, if you are certain about becoming pilot, then yeah, for sure, sign up for cntaaonline.in. Make sure that everything is buttoned up for you to become a pilot and just willingness is not enough okay persistence 
hard work is required to become pilot there are struggles involved in pilot career as well okay so don't just look at the good part of and the fancy part of flying uh, and um, pilot's life and make that decision make sure that your finances are settled you are medically uh, perfect to go for it and make sure that you have a willingness to become a pilot that is strong enough that will persist with you until you become an airline pilot if that is the case yes for sure go for pilot training okay and yeah sign up for cntwa online if you are uh, one of the aspiring pilots all right nice talking with you all okay nice talking to you thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one yeah